Good evening, James. This is Leonard, aka the Poker Paparazzi. And something just occurred to me with um, all the COVID related, um, you know, pandemic type situations, uh, the government has allowed for the COVID CARES Act to borrow up to um, or withdraw up to 100,000 from um, participating 401ks and Roth IRAs. If we want, if um, as uh, IBC or IUL participants, we were interested in doing a form of cash um, dumping into policies that we were yet to set up, um, which which particular product would you recommend and why? Uh, and uh, lastly, how might we go ahead and structure um, policies to, um, let's say, divide up that 100,000? Uh, thanks again for your for your, all your contributions and look forward to hearing your answer soon. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Leonard, for that question. That was one of the things that I thought I would bring up uh, in one of these live streams anyways, is the CARES Act. It was passed in order to tackle this or to help tackle the pandemic and provide people access to their 401k money if they've been affected by uh, the pandemic that we're under. Most people in this country, under the broad definition of what it takes to be impacted by it, most people have been impacted by it. So uh, it might be worth looking into. If you have a 401k and you've ever thought about getting money out of it, you can borrow now instead of a $50,000 limit, you can borrow up to 100,000 or you can withdraw 100,000. If you borrow the hundred up to 100,000, you have a year to start making those payments on it, whereas normally you would have to start making payments on it right away and you're limited to five years. Uh, now you can wait a year to start making those payments. That gives you an opportunity where you could borrow from, the, from your 401k, start your policy and then pay it back. And when you pay the big chunk of it back, because most of what we design for you turns into cash value, when you pay it back, now you're left with only a very small amount that you haven't paid back and very low payments to get it back into your 401k. So that's a great opportunity. You also have the ability to just withdraw it and pay the taxes over the course of three years. Practically, that means you put your money into a policy and now you have a full year's growth, two years growth, three years growth that you can actually pay the taxes on. Uh, with no penalties. You get no no early withdrawal penalties under the CARES Act as well. So really great opportunity. Uh, so what you want to use it on, I think, is going to be dependent on what we talked about a little bit earlier. When we talk about do we want to go with an IUL or do we want to go with a whole life and what your needs are. What, what bases do you not have covered? Now, I have a video out there and I have a retirement pyramid. Um, I think the re I think the video is called the retirement pyramid or something like that. So when you look at the retirement pyramid, the goal behind that is financial planning to ensure your future. And we we have it designed as a pyramid because we want you to have a solid financial base. And what constitutes a solid financial base? What a lot of people do is when you look at that pyramid, we have insurance and in <laughs> Nostradamus. We have insurance and we have pensions and we have social security, things that are guaranteed on the bottom of that. And we have higher risk investments up near the top of that. And what a lot of people do is they don't get their bases covered. They end up putting more money. They end up putting more money into the top of that pyramid. So it's inverted. Now what happens when you try and balance an inverted pyramid? It's likely to topple over. Uh, that's the same risk you present when you don't cover your financial bases. And so check out that video on the retirement pyramid to get an idea. But one of the keys in that base is insurance, whether it's home insurance, car insurance, or life insurance, or any other type of insurance. It serves a purpose to help protect the overall nest egg that you're growing throughout your life, including your ability to earn. So. We want to make sure that we have that base covered. That base can be covered with whole life, the, the life insurance portion. It can be covered with whole life. It can be covered with IUL. It's 
traditionally, like I'm more comfortable if you use a, a certain amount of whole life to cover that base because when you get older and that cost of insurance goes up when it comes to the IUL, the way that we plan on these IULs performing may not be how they actually perform because the performance is tied to the stock market. Now, I don't like to have everything at risk with the stock market, okay? It's been consistent, it's been good, it's made a lot of people rich, but there's no guarantees that come along with it. So, the, the pull the ripcord, last ditch option when it comes to an IUL, if it's not performing as expected, we have an overloan protection rider that we can just pull our cash value out and stop the premium payments. So when the cost gets too high, we have the ability to end that. The problem is you you don't you no longer have that death benefit. The death benefit that we set up for you is contingent on growth in the policy. Otherwise, in order for it to be a good death benefit, otherwise it's just going to be a pretty minimal death benefit, but that even that minimal one is going to get expensive when you get older if you don't have growth in a policy that's going to far surpass the cost of the insurance. Now, we expect that to happen. The reason I like IULs is because the history of the indexes, our ability to adjust to them, and our ability to fund this product tell me that we have a very, very high likelihood of being successful, but it's not guaranteed. And without that guarantee, that means there's a possibility that you're not going to have insurance when you pass away. You're not gonna have a, a tax-free death benefit to pass on to your beneficiaries. Whole life, you get that guarantee. You know that the cost is gonna be the same throughout your life, and the way that we design those policies, uh, when you wanna stop making premium payments at any point after the first seven years, you can. We can turn it into a reduced paid up policy. No more new premiums are due. You can still access the funds within the policy. You can still borrow from them and pay them back. You just can't put new money into it. And that death benefit maintains and the death benefit continues to grow as the cash value continues to grow. So I like whole life securing that portion of it. Uh, so when we decide how what to do with this uh, potential 100,000 that we can pull out from the CARES Act, make sure you got your bases covered. That's number one, make sure you got your bases covered. Now, if you want to then, if you got your base covered with whole life, then you wanna look at putting it into an IUL, I'm 100% for that, it's a great way to use that those funds. You can look at doing multiple policies, you can make sure that each family member gets covered. Uh, I think rather I think it's a good idea before you start contributing too much to one policy if you put all your eggs in that one basket part of spreading out the risk is to make sure that each family member is covered so while you may be the the lone breadwinner uh, the your ability to earn income is not just contingent on your physical health but it's also contingent on your mental health and so if something were to happen to one of your family members, that can affect your mental health and it can affect your ability to earn an income. So we wanna make sure that each of our family members are covered. You can get insurance on each one of them and what that can do is it can help provide you time to grieve at a time of loss. It can help provide you with ex new expenses that come up because it's not just a, a potential loss of income on your part but it can also be, uh, maybe if your spouse passes away, maybe you need help now raising kids. You might need to now pay for a nanny. You might need to pay for a babysitter. There are other expenses that can come up just to kind of help make sure that you and the remaining family members are all in a position to succeed still. You don't want, we really don't want financial burdens to hinder their ability to learn, their ability to grow and live a long, successful life. So those are those are the reasons that we get the life insurance. And I would definitely say look to make sure that you're covered. All your bases are covered within the family. And then we can start looking at how can we ex then expand? Because we can design policies that are good for cash value for any of your family members. 
get those bases covered, and now we can look at, okay, what's the best way to expand your current policies? And there's a couple ways you can do that. Uh, if you already have policies that you like the performance of, you'd just like to per put more money into them, you can always go back to that same insurance company and see if you can expand that same policy. And that's one way that you can absorb those large chunks of cash. The only downside is they're gonna ask you for new underwriting. They're gonna want you to prove that you're healthy enough that they should accept that and give you a higher death benefit because of it. Uh, okay, so create a base with the whole life and then level up with an index universal life product. Yeah, that's basically the way that I view it. Um, you wanna have your basis covered with a whole life so that you know end of the day, every single day, you're covered on whole life. Um, when it comes to term insurance, a lot of people may feel comfortable and may feel secure with the term insurance policy they have. Well, term insurance policies tend to come with a lot of caveats that they will not pay out in the event of a certain thing happening. Whole life insurance does not have that. If you get past the two year probationary period where they can challenge something that you put into your application, you can even you can commit suicide and it's gonna pay out, okay? That's just the reality of it. When it says whole life, it's your whole life. Uh, you're gonna pass away at some point and they're gonna pay out at some point. That's the guarantees you're buying when it comes to whole life. When it comes to term insurance, you gotta read the fine print because they are likely excluding suicides. Um, there's probably a whole host of other things that are excluded as well. So I haven't, I haven't bought a term insurance. I don't deal too much with term insurance because uh, I decided early on in my insurance career to focus on the infinite banking concept and helping people with the cash value. So I haven't dug into too much of those, but I do know that uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of things to be concerned about that are excluded when it comes to term insurance policies that you don't get with whole life. Uh, and IULs are considered permanent insurance too, so you shouldn't have uh, you shouldn't have those contingencies in an IUL either. It should be the same. And when I went through my IUL policies, so I'm not familiar with all of them, but mine don't have any exclusions in my IUL policies either. So how would I structure the cash dump in? Oh yeah, good question. How would I structure the cash dump in? This is gonna be largely dependent on what your overall goals are and your overall funding of a policy. When it comes to, and also the products that you use. So if you're, if you're doing a cash dump in in a whole life policy, remember that we have a seven year period where we first start the policy that uh, we, can't, we can't turn off the premiums. So if it's just starting out a policy and you wanna do a dump in, we can set it up. We wouldn't wanna dump in all 100,000 in that first year if that's the only money you're gonna put into the policy. Because the, the way that we have to design it, there's going to be an underlying base premium that needs to get paid each year until we can turn that premium off after year seven. In that case, we would want to break up that payments into maybe you know, three or four years. Um, you could spread it out into seven years total, but I think three or four years is a good balance. It allows you to get that money in. You can start seeing the growth. And realistically, I think once you get started on that path uh, and you realize the potential behind it and what that putting that cash into the policy does for you and your ability to access the cash from it, I think you'll end up putting more into it anyways. So if we, if we design it with a three or four year dump in, I think you'll end up putting more in over those first three, year, three or four years and certainly over the next three or four till we get to that seven year period. So that's why, I would, that's why I would lean towards a three or four year dump in. If you already have a policy, how's your policies performing? Do you have loans out against the policy? Um, you may want to uh, make sure that you're you're at your mech or you've caught up on any any payments that they will allow you to catch up because if you with some companies if you've paid less than your mech you're allowed to catch up to it uh, at least for a certain number of years so that would be the first step is we want to get as close to the mech as possible in any year that we can because those are the most efficient uses of our dollars. So with that 100,000 first step, if you already have a policy is, let's find out how much can you dump into your current policy. Those are gonna be the most efficient dollars. After that, 
if you still have money that you want to dump in and you can't with that, we can either look at expanding that policy, means going back to that same company and seeing if they will increase your amount of insurance and your ability to add cash to it, or we can start a new policy. And that new policy may go back through that same company. Maybe you want to try a different company. Maybe you want to get um, a little variation on the pies that your hands are in. Or, or maybe because you become an owner when you buy these whole life policies, maybe you just want to be an owner of a different company. What that does is it spreads out your potential risk that's reliant on dividend payments. So remember, our whole life growth the growth in our whole life is contingent on the dividend payments that each of these companies pay out. Well, those dividends are based on the profits that that company brings in. And the profits are going to be dictated on how well those companies are run, what type of investments they've made each year, how they're doing when they're selling their other products to like term life insurance or IULs where they don't become owners of the policy. All of those things can be a big factor in what the dividend payouts are. And so maybe you want to spread that out and become an owner of a different company. So now you have just a little bit different, a um, little bit different portfolio, we'll say. The other thing too is different companies offer different types of loans. And so uh, Mass Mutual, you have non-direct recognition where you can get a loan and you'll still get the dividend payment. Then you have direct recognition companies like Guardian where you'll have a loan amount and then they'll credit you that same amount so you don't have that chance at arbitrage that you do with mass mutual okay i like both of those but they serve a different purpose and maybe you'd like to have the option there as well uh let's see seven year setup would be the hundred about a hundred thousand plus whatever additional yearly contributions so 14k plus your annual premium yeah yeah that would that would make sense 14K plus your annual premium would be the 100,000 spread out over the full seven years. Yep. This was a question asked and answered during one of our Wealth Care Wednesdays live streams. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section below or join us on one of our Wealth Care Wednesday live streams where you can ask the question and we'll answer it on the air live. I hope you found value in today's video. If you'd like to find out more about IUL and whole life, check out these videos right over here, and we'll see you next time. Now go maximize your cash flow.